Drugs are cool. I, I should say that. But you don't, do you do, you do the good ones? You do the fun ones? You do Coke? You do, uh, mm. no, I wish. Shit. I know. I know. I, I got scared. I got scared too young. I overdosed when I was 19. Really? Yeah. So when you, on what? I took a bunch of GHB, drank a bunch, ecstasy, like all together in one night. And it was really the amount of GHB and the booze, which was like, you weren't supposed to mix them ever. Yeah. And then I just ended up in a coma. So when Whoops. you, when you have that early, yeah, it's, and I could see the path I was on because I was trying thing. I was in college and Coke would have been a natural thing, but it's too, it's too terrifying. Like I was too scared by that. I thought you were going to say Len Bias. Len Bias was my dog. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. One of your road dogs. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, w that did it for me. I've done, co I've oh, literally no. done this once and I did a bump the night after my Comedy Central you did? hour. Because I just was like, well, it'd be funny if I died. If I do this bump and I die, that's funny. You really committed. Yeah, yeah. Like I did, and I did one line and I was like, I don't even know why this is famous. I don't know why I've heard of this drug. What's that shit um, that people are like, they're like, stay away from it. And they're, they're, they're saying that it helps you. They're selling it like as a workout supplement too. Uh, cre is it? Uh, oh, Kratom. Yeah. Yeah. That gives you like this, uh, in certain doses, it gives you like this euphoric kind of like feel yes. good thing. But people are using it sometimes to get off of opiates. Yes. I, I used to eat it. I used to take. I, used I to, took the liquid form of it and I was like, I feel great. And then yeah. people were like, be careful. A lot of people were like warning me to be yeah. careful. I don't know. I never, I was taking it every four days. Do you trust? For, donated drugs no. okay i get thrown stuff yeah. given stuff never okay do you give it to somebody and they do it yeah, yeah. great yeah um, there's always someone to stand up who's like yeah fine yeah i don't give it to yeah yeah you know when like everything's going wrong in a day and you just hit that point that you're like <laughs> what the fuck is this yeah it was that i was like okay what yeah. are you what are you fucking yeah. thank god oxycontin wasn't invented until 1990 fucking seven would you are you a substance oh guy? my god yeah i quit drinking 10 years ago but i still smoke weed and I've, I've started to get a little better handle on that but i was like once michelle got killed i was like oh so i'm just gonna get fucked up all day every day and that's just what i did that became my personality smoking weed before school smoking smoking weed during school, smoking weed after school, drinking, and then mushrooms, just like everything. Just started getting fucked up. As I, I was getting as fucked up as I could from 16 to 29. Just like, yeah, hey, we'll get fucked up. Let's just All go. day. Oh, I loved it. Loved it. Was good at it. I mean, I got the family history. Fun? It was a blast. Talk to anybody that got used to get fucked up with me. They're like, I was, I was a... It was a real good time. Never got mad. Would always just be joking, laughing. It, it, it numbed everything. Yeah. It's spending money. Is it expensive? Oh, yeah. To booze, especially in New York. When you move to New York, you mm -hmm. know, you're like, oh, I'd have bar tabs that were like, I'd be by myself dropping $115, $130, just getting fucked up, shots and beers. Start at what time? Whenever. Whatever would kick it off. If someone would be like, yeah, you want to meet here? And you're like, yeah, I'm going to be a little late. I'm going to get a beer next door. And then I get a beer and be like, well, I didn't even want this. Now I, we're in they it. They were late. Yeah. Now we're in it. And then it would just be like, and I was good at it. I was like really good at getting fucked up. Meaning you weren't. I wouldn't you, get sloppy. I wouldn't yeah. throw up. I wouldn't get mad. I wouldn't start fights. I was just really good at it. Same sense of humor. Same sense of humor. Joke around. Do voices. I I would I would like. Voices, my God. I would. It was so much fun. This guy's the total package. It was. It was. I would put on stand up that I liked. I would like find obscure sets from people. Like I would find like, oh, have you seen Chappelle's second Def Jam? And like put it on. <laughs> or like I would find like a uh, Dana. Like, do you ever watch Dana Carvey's Critics Choice? And like this bit right here. <laughs> Hicks, you know, like I would find random stuff because I loved stand up. I believe Dave's second Def Jam is wearing a sweater. I believe so. His first one is the one with the pizza, delivering pizzas in DC for Domino's. Mm -hmm. And I still love that it's joke. Okay. I used to deliver pizzas for Domino's. <laughs> now, one of you motherfuckers is going to tip kid me. Kid had good bits in high school. Crazy. He had a bit. Here's a bit he had in high school. Alf, remember Alf? Yeah. It's a good thing Alf didn't land in my neighborhood. Yeah. Because. Two weeks later, 
you would have seen dudes wearing elf skin coats. That's so funny. <laughs> in high school. I mean, yeah. That's like those jokes where you're like, God damn. And you're like, okay. Yeah. You just wrote that as a child? Yeah, like, all right. It's like Stevie Wonder when he yeah. wrote, when he, yeah. 16 years old, calls his go, album okay. Genius. Yeah, I'm just going to stop. Um, <laughs> yep, yeah. okay. And I love, I mean, that's the thing I love about stand. And I think like, uh, you know, stand-up was the thing that I just loved. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, well, I can just watch this and obsess about it. Well, fanboy. It's, it's funny, like what you were, the thing that you were experiencing where you're like abandoning yourself, mm -hmm. you're getting abandoned. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you think, well, I should abandon myself, but you're mad at yourself and them. Yeah. And it's like a perfect way to write stand up. Yeah. Cause you're like, I suck, but so right, do but they. like, no, yeah. I have a few things I'd like to say yeah. before you fucking the the letter to, the message to the firing squad like. yeah and i wrote i remember like when i did um my first conan i had some jokes about my mom dating it was five when my mom started dating some guy would come over i'd be like cool a new roommate <laughs> don't touch my stuff <laughs> and i like called her and i was like hey I do these jokes about you dating and i kind of like yeah i kind of make you look like a little bit of a whore but it's like funny and my mom and i was like i just I just want to let you know and she was like that's hilarious she's like hey I, if i put you through it write jokes yeah she was like without her being as supportive as she was like once she because once my sister died my mom was like what am i gonna tell you she's yeah, like, like you're an adult like you've you once i was 16 i was like smoking cigarettes at home i'd get high in the garage like there was no like there was no like uh dan you know she was like i had a job it just became like a little adult yeah that would like help out around the house i'm picturing you wearing a name like a yeah, dan yeah sewn in dan <laughs> i go hi i'm dan i'm the son uh what yeah. can i do for you i'll um, mow the lawn all right well that's a lot that's a bunch of things were you people pleasing so that people wouldn't die or abandon you yeah, people wouldn't leave right. if, if i was nice to you you wouldn't leave if i gave you stuff you wouldn't leave yeah you know what i mean so you were probably buying drinks all the time all the time yeah let me get a, yeah. Uh, I'd buy I'd buy weed. Do you want to fucking smoke? I got smoke. You'd buy weed. I'd buy an eighth. You know, and be like, oh, yeah. Well, fucking, let's roll. Would you up. give people like a to go bag? Yeah, you'd be like, oh, you want a nug? Here you can go. That was totally my personality when I was younger. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, and you, you never thought I'm getting, I'm playing myself. Not till I was older. When that kicked in, that kind of tapped into the anger. So you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Why the fuck? And I started resenting that, and then it was like Giannis Papas was like you need to go to therapy the fact that you are not in therapy is a danger to people around you and then i started going to therapy and i was like oh you were snapping at people because you realize no one's making you people please yeah it was me so i started but then you kind of your brain tells you they're making you well here's like, the thing they're my not mom, making you my mom tried to get me in therapy when i was young when i was like 10 because i started getting like a little violent towards people my mom was like we should should probably put him in therapy didn't work didn't take who I, told you which therapist said you could be angry different therapist I, the one i have as an adult oh so you weren't angry no until like, you were 30 something uh, tw mid 20s late 20s um but i remember going to therapy with this guy tom and i just was like yeah how are we gonna get through this so i can go home i was like 10 i want to go home and watch cartoons i don't want to talk to you you dork had to come to the office, you got a sweater vest on, you fucking dork. Get out of my face. It was like that kind of energy. And then when my sister died, I was entered into a trial to do, actually, you talked about this with Josh Homme, the uh, e EMDR. EMDR yeah. uh, at Denver University. They were trying it. And I was a uh, trial when I was 16, but I was super fucked up all the yeah. time. So I, it didn't yeah. work. But they did the with the lights. Yep. They tried to like, oh, you processed a lot of trauma recently. We're going to try to we got fresh trauma we got fresh <laughs> fresh catch but they didn't know that i was smoking a blunt in my car yeah in the in the parking lot and then coming in and being like man yeah, genie doesn't want to date me <laughs> and they're like what we want to talk about your sister dying i was like nah, i don't want to nah, talk about that stupid yeah we're not talking it's about good. that she's gay so yeah they stop being you're fucking lame so it really became like when i was older i finally got a therapist that was like you want to work on this stuff and i was like yeah i think i need to and then it's been 12 years and I could tell you my life has improved 200%. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot.
it's like those are sales numbers. Two hundred percent. Those are like hundred percent. It's complete. That's how you get a. Pro- you're going to two. You you're get getting a promotion. Dude. Yeah, two hundred percent. Yeah, year over year. And I was always in trouble. I did drugs at an early age, and that's how I survived. What age? I did were meth you? at eleven. Wow. Yeah. Weed, meth, LSD, all that shit. Eleven, twelve in that time period. And where did you do meth? Oh, there was a kid that was skateboarding by my house, and he flipped a skateboard over, and he was he did a line of meth. That's about the. And coolest. I just walked across the street, and I went, "Can I?" I didn't even know what it was. Like, it's that's funny, how much but you I just was knew, like I. This I go, whatever, is... if that's gonna make me feel better, different than I am now, I want to do it. And then I would sneak into my dad's um, liquor cabinet, and also his. He was such an alcoholic that he would have a refrigerator in the garage. Oh, my dad had that. Yeah, yeah, and for I, just and for beer, just for beer. Yep. Your dad had that? Yep. Yeah. And so my mom was like, would stock it. And so I could just drink as much beer as I wanted and no one would know. Yeah. And what? when did you realize, like, why is this like this? This podcast is getting deep, huh? Yeah, that's what I do. You should watch my Netflixes. Uh, They're pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> and did, would you try to relate to other kids? Like, well, you were all going to get fucked up and they'd be like, what are you talking about? I found the crew. Okay. You find a crew and then it's like, my crew is weird because I don't want to name names, but um, there was some homosexuality going on. Homosexuality? Homosexuality. Oh, how, how do you say it? Homosexuality. D- tell me more. What do you mean? Yeah, and then you would get drunk at a party and then like a friend of yours would go, hey, come and suck my dick behind this bush. And do you think they were gay or they were just weird at, like, at that age where it's like Yeah, middle maybe. school, I don't know, maybe. No, I don't think they're gay, no. Right. But, I, but it was still like, it seemed rapey. Yeah, well then, if it, you know what <laughs> yeah, they yeah. say, if it's seem rapey, it's rapey. Yeah, yeah, but it was like, but I said also, I was, there was so much going on that, back then that it was like, it was just another thing. You know? Also, do you remember childhood as all terror? Well, it was mostly terror, but there was like, you know, um, moments of um, relief. Yeah. And there was moments of levity, and there was moments of like, my dad would feel so guilty, was like, let's go Disneyland. Oh, it, so he did feel guilty. Yeah, so we'd be like, oh, we're at Disneyland. This is cool, right? But then he would get drunk and then, you know what I mean, go hog wild again, you know? So it's like, he felt guilty. And it, it, it's so funny because when I graduated from high school, because he, you know, when I got on Mad TV, he was on sketches. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. Like, he did a sketch with me and Ike Barinholtz. Yeah. In a bathtub. And my dad had lines and everything. Did they, uh, was he your dad? Was he like, Bobby's Yeah, he played my dad. Here. Yeah, yeah. We would right. do sketches like, you know, Ike visits my parents' house for Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? And my actual parents would be in the scene. That's wild. It was wild. And my dad was, everyone would love him. Yeah. Your dad's so cool. He was so cool when I graduated from high school. Oh, like he was. He changed so dramatically. That's funny. So you think the stress guy. of having kids was like too much for him? No, I think what happened was um, one day when I was 16 years old, my dad, he used to take golf clubs and beat, th- you know, just hit my legs with it as hard as he could. And I remember I was on the wrestling team in high school and I was so, so loaded. You know what I mean? That one day he would, he picked up a golf club and I went, you know what? I'm going to pick up a golf club too. <laughs> and we're going to go. And we went at it. Like, I hit See the home. same size as you around the same At time? that point, I was, he was smaller. Right? It's go time. Let's and go. I hit him once in the ribs with a fucking iron, nine iron. Like... As yeah, as yeah, like Tiger Woods style. It almost broke his ribs. And he dropped... Well, how did it not? Yeah, he dropped his fucking golf club and just went into the room. He never touched me again. Fuck. I wish I had that moment. You never had that? Because I had golf clubs. <laughs> that You should have... Golf I clubs didn't are know, great. I didn't know that we could <laughs> use them against our dad. Yeah, you I, can't. You can't. <laughs> I was using you them You can't. Wrong. You can't. That would, I had so many <laughs> golf clubs. Yeah. And it never occurred to me. That I could you use can them. you can, fuck yeah. And that why, why was the end you, of it. Why didn't you? Because you thought that the consequences would be too severe. Yeah, it was the idea of hitting my dad is like was impossible. But did he hit you? Yeah, yeah. You're my brother yourself. one time. One of my brothers threw him. This is like the kind of guy my dad was. He like went into my brother's room. My brother was probably eighteen or twenty, and like tried to start a fight, and my brother. Peter threw my dad into a closet, <laughs> like through the door onto the ground. And then my dad goes, picking on an old man, huh? Which is like, 
oh, that's fucking bullshit. You fucking weirdo. You started the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's like this weird gaslighty thing of picking out an old man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that got in my head because, and then I was like, well, now I can't hit him with a golf club. Now I have to just play golf. Well, you can't randomly hit him one day at breakfast. I mean, but if he's attacking you, then yeah. you pick up the golf club. Yeah, I w- yeah, it yeah. just never got to wow. that. Wow. You were in California or in Minnesota when this happened? Minis- no, California then. Well, it you do, feels you, like a California move. It's a California move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a Minnesota move. No. Yeah, yeah. Midwest? Ice pick. Yeah, That's there Minnesota. you hit him with an ice pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, skates. Skate, yeah, skates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. And. But luckily, I got sober early. How early? I was a junior in high school. What made you go to the treatment centers? Oh, I, I got kicked out of school, and I was like, not, and I was just doing so much meth and 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 weed and and. Me- I the people are gonna think I'm crazy. For that. I've heard a lot of good things about meth. It's the best. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I had a girlfriend who had done meth, and she was like, "My teeth had never looked better, and all you do is fuck." Yeah, you can't come though. That's a problem. Oh my god, oh, I because I was so young and I wasn't fucking then. But I would jerk off like crazy. And you couldn't come. It would take me three hours. Yeah. yeah my, dig, my dig would bleed, Save literally. Uh, you know I mean? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. But um, eventually you'd get there. Yeah. But, but it would come I, out as powder, right? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. And then you'd snort that and <laughs> yeah, start yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, that's funny. So then my senior year, I would go to A meetings out in La Jolla. And then when I gradu- graduated from high school, I um, I just moved to La Jolla, and I lived two blocks from the comedy store. Yeah. So that's how the comedy thing started. When you're getting kicked out of schools, and like authorities are going, and cops, and like we're, do you think this is a normal life, or do you know like this is falling apart? I don't really understand it. But let's just see what happens. No, the goal was death. I did not want to live. Because even I would though, go to this cliff by my like, there's like a little cliff, and I would stand there for days and go, should I jump? Should I jump? I mean, I want, I didn't want to be here. And what were the thoughts like? I just do it. This is the day. I do it. Do it. And I, I don't know. It was just, I think the fear of the pain. Right. Right. And then it, what if it? Because it wasn't that high of a thing. I think it probably would have broken the leg. Yeah. Right. And then it was be, it'd be a call for, I mean, a cry for help. Yeah. Almost. Because I wanted to do, if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it. Like if I worked in, if I lived in San Francisco, I probably would have died. I would just got to the fucking you had access gate. to bridges. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I had no access to that. You know what I mean? So um, but I would just stand there and just go, should I just jump? Because I just hated it. You know. Like you would wake up miserable, or you was it like a negative tape in your head? Yeah, just that hole in your soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no future. I and mean, that's the thing. It's like, especially like in sophomore junior, I would get. I, my grades were terrible so i knew college wasn't the thing right and i like i don't know how i'm going to survive in the future i have no skills whatsoever so i was just like oh i i, have, I don't know what to do i'm like i envisioned like maybe working at like maybe like at a home depot or something yeah but that was like it which is not not bad if you if you work at home depot that's a great job no, I, I don't, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, they shouldn't like, kill themselves what they shouldn't kill themselves <laughs> no, they shouldn't kill themselves. That's a okay. good job and then you got sober and how long were you sober for that time almost 13 years Wow. Yeah. So you moved here, started doing stand up stuff. I relapsed when I was on that TV. Right. Okay. Yeah. I knew that you did, but I didn't know that. And then you then you got sober again for on my second year of Matt the end of my second year of Matt TV during that summer, I got sober again. Okay. And then you were sober seventeen years after that. So you're making it longer. Next time will be twenty, twenty one. No, be, no, because I relapsed when my dad died and then I only lasted like nine months or whatever. Oh god. And I relapsed again. And now I have a year next Wednesday. Congratulations. Um, Thank you, I mean. What do you, what do you fill the hole up with? You're not going to like my answer. I, I think I know what it is. What is it? Success. No. What? Don't in, say in fact, math. Do not say no, math. No, no, no. In fact, success is, I call it a false god. It is. Because when you first, like when I was doing stand-up um, in my 20s, I remember going, oh, I don't need AA meetings because the applause of an audience feels like spirituality almost, mm-hmm. right? It kind of fills it, but it's like not real, right? Because eventually it stops working. So the only thing you can do is go spiritual, right? It's like, 
I, I, you know, every day I struggle with the concept of God, you know what I mean? Because it's just, you just look at the planet and, and the history of our planet mm-hmm. and you just kind of go, how could there be? But it's the only way I can do it. So I, I don't. I, oh, you thought I wouldn't like that answer. God. I believe in God now. That's insane. You? Yes. Did I not tell you? Is it safe to say you're sober? I don't I don't really like to you know, I think it. a lot of people uh do, but I just feel like my take is, you know, I, I don't want to be like an an advertisement for anything. Right. I just think that life is so tricky that you just never know. So I just yeah. don't want anyone you know, I try to be open about my experiences. Anyway, yeah, I mean I who certainly were, okay. I certainly don't I certainly it was somebody who was, you know, uh notorious and infamous for for getting high and obviously that's not my lifestyle anymore um but i definitely uh i definitely identify with that uh typology of of person or something of i don't know that you know like the brain ever changes or the way you hear music yeah. or something yeah really changes so in in that sense it's always sort of like in other words i'm somebody who still needs to be kind of like walking these streets at 5 a.m sort of you know, just thinking thoughts in the middle of the night, almost like alone and, you know, or within the company of strangers. Uh, and just to say, and in that sense, I don't know that I'm fully, uh, you know, it's like I'm a, a changed person in terms of I'm not, I'm no longer uh, like self-destructive in these same sort of violent ways that land you in, you know, hospitals and DUIs and that kind of a thing. When you think about that being like that, yeah, is it about self-acceptance? Is it about you feel odd? Like, do you ever think about like your motives for, because I, you are, you're like a legit interesting, I don't know anyone that's kind of like you. Thank you. Uh, you know, the other thing that's so weird is, uh, I don't know if you're getting older, but I've been getting older. So what's happening you now- come to LA is we, we slowed it down. all this kind of shenanigans when we sort of like, even when my mind t- sort of tells me a story about myself, it's so, you know, connected to this like great event that are like my years at a, as a junkie. And really in the sort of like history of that timeline, that's now like a blip yeah. in the axis of, you know what I mean? There's like sort of 25 years before now there's like, almost, you know, 20 years later, which is weird because I'm 22, but <laughs> it's it's sort of weird because it, that it's such a sort of seminal event. But I think, so in a way, I no longer see it as being so much about drugs and alcohol per se, but more almost like I was uh, at Tisch, like a film and philosophy double major. I was like skipped my senior year of high school. So I was there by the time I was like 16 years old. And in that time, I was already sort of a philosophy major, like those were my interests. At 16. And yeah, and I think that the truth of my story was more like I'd seen so much, you know, fucked up shit as a kid, alcoholic, crazy parents, and that kind of a thing. And I'd already been a child actor. I was never a child star. And uh, and I think probably because of like my- And you never will be. Again. Do you hear me? And God damn it. <laughs> Not if you keep this Unless, silliness up. <laughs> uh, and- I think probably because I always have like big hair and like a, you know, this personality or whatever in my accent, it seems like I'm such a, an extrovert, you know, but in fact, I think probably as a kid, it was more that I was cataloging things like a, a witness sort of more like a, and maybe it was just like a coping mechanism, but almost more like a, a writer or a filmmaker. Like I was sort of watching vignettes because they were weird and traumatizing and fucked up. And there'd be like, 60s music blasting from these crazy parents. So I would sort of see them as sequences and had like an imagination because I was already in the language of sort of like on camera, we make, you know, we sort of tell stories. And I did, I got sort of, you know, famous like American Pie, Slums of Beverly Hills. And then I sort of like dropped out of college and sort of aggressively like dropped out of that life because I found it to be not, where it was at on this very sort of like teenage, almost um, like Jack Kerouac, Bukowski level that I was like, what is this thing? Like the top of the mountain is just, you know, like fame and like sycophants and free clothes. And what the fuck is this? You know, like that's where, and you know, my parents had put me in that business. And so it just didn't add up. And I don't think I had the 
sort of proper support network to say, you know, no, this is just an aspect of self. I was very entangled with like the artist trip of, you know, either this is a substantive life or it's not. So I think I really went under into like this sort of belly of the beast of to see how the other half live in a way that was very like a um, pseudo intellectual teenager who's obsessed with a certain kind of literature that is traditionally very male, lone wolf, like mm-hmm. expat. I want to see what it's like, sort of, you know, boozy under yeah. the skin. And it's just non filter cigarettes. And then I think almost like a, a narc who went in too deep. It was like the nature of addiction. So you really look back on it yeah. like almost you were just like, I'm just see what this is like just for a second. Not even for a second, but more I was like this trip of like this sort of ego trip of I kind of I did it. You know what I mean? Congratulations, American Pie and magazines. And I rem- as you said, yeah. American Pie, I remember thinking when I saw you that you were in it, I was surprised you did it. Yeah. I, I was like, I was surprised they got you. I was like, yeah. they got Natasha Leone. Wow. Like the good for them. And I was like, I didn't I just thought you were a cool indie yeah. person. And I think probably I was just sort of confused, like sort of like now I, it's, it's very fun being, you know, a girl just because it's sort of like time has caught up or something. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. The women in their thirties are unlike, like I'll meet girls. And I'll be like, you know, women couldn't be like you yeah. 20 years ago. Then it was more, I just think I was sort of like, what is this whole gig, you know? And uh, anyway, so I think like a narc that was in too deep, I sort of, uh, you know, drugs are catching. So I kind of like, uh, you know, and Made they to you if you're weak. Yeah. And uh, and then it was sort of like the the journey out was really the dark nights of the soul because it was not like she's back. You know what I mean? It was a whole fucking extravagance of, you know, you better go on this spiritual quest because you've got nothing else, kid. Like you, that was really where I saw that I had burnt down the whole house. And then now it's like I've spent almost 20 years sort of rebuilding and, but almost then it was more like a choice to kind of get back into all these things. So all the relationships sort of changed of, you know, people like, you know, uh, you know, Maya Rudolph and Amy Poehler that I knew back then, it was suddenly like Amy and I were co-creating a a show or Mm -hmm. Maya and I were like making a production company or it just felt more, okay, there's a different way to do this whole game that makes sense for someone like me and that all that experience isn't wasted. But anyway, just to say that it's it's sort of, it's, it's weird now looking back at all that stuff and the language in which you have to talk about it to make it make sense. Sort of, you know, like season one of Orange is the New Black, I had to sort of talk about it in a way that would be, you know, palatable to people sort of reaccepting that. Per- it's just, it's all so weird when you talk about the nature of humanity and how we don't fully give ourselves like the full breath of yeah. the human experience is all yeah. I mean. Well, I say all that only knowing that we know each other and part of, you know, the excitement of you doing this is, that you're somebody who does see things that way. So that's all. So th- that was a thank you. Yeah, kind of. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, you know, I've always sort of indulged in a buffet of drugs, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of crystal for a while. Sure. You know, and uh, which is from my hometown, you know, some one of our main exports. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I think I always had a fascination with there's so much to do that staying up late. I you know look, there's nothing cooler than staying up late. Yeah. And it's sort of like you want to dance, you want an omelet, you want to fix your car, but you realize after a while it's like those aren't eggs, this car's not broken, and there's no music, you know. <laughs> and so I, I just think after a while it's And just, you snorted, you told me. You did not life smoking or apparently is for bridge and tunnel weekenders. It's no, that's the intro to homelessness. <laughs> Oh, that's the, oh, that's, that's like the, you're just you're you're you're. It's not worth the oh the yeah. That's huge exactly kick that you get from smoking. You have to snort it. That's There's how you get on the gravity. faces of meth, like yeah, sort okay. of portfolio. No, because I had a I dated a woman who used to do meth, and she was like, my skin was never better, and my teeth <laughs> were perfect, <laughs> and I never lied to myself. <laughs> well, no, she said like you just fuck all the time. That's all you do. Yeah, essentially, unlike cocaine, it's like 
it's boner town. It puts an S on your chest, but that S is stands for speed. <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> There's yeah. an, is there an S on my chest or not? It doesn't matter what it's for. It, it sort of leaves you emotionally in a strange spot because you're interested. You're interested, but uh, you're only you kind of it keeps the stone from sinking all the way. You're kind of skipping along the top. You're interested, you're interested but you have no attention span. Right, but you're ready to be like. You know, I, I I feel I feel I was able to keep my attention span, but also creates a bluntness where you're like, okay, enough of that. Now we're you know, and you don't you're like I can't worry about the, hurting that person's feelings. I don't think it made me cruel by any standard. It's just I love to to talk and listen, engage in that back and forth. But um, it's certainly it, you keep your eye on the prize, and you and you put these kind of emotional blinders on. I think, and frankly, I realized that that. It played into my workaholic nature. And you said you never missed a meeting, meaning you were able to do meth off and on for 16 years. Yeah. 16 and glorious years. <laughs> and you were a functioning. I was a high functioning guy. You know, I, I, I did, you know, business and didn't spend a lot, didn't spend a lot of money, didn't have any, didn't wreck any cars, didn't do, you know, um, I just felt like, like I was leaning forward the whole time and really frankly enjoyed it so much of the time you know I don't I gotta say from the outside in faces of meth stuff aside if I could like pause my life and do it for a while I would do it yeah I mean I think that's that's it's real it's real tractor beam is it's difficulty to sort of exit from I bet yeah you know that's it's got like a four percent Right. So once you get involved in that life, it's it's very difficult. And, and, and that's including snorting. It doesn't make a difference yeah, for you. Yeah. I mean, I think that the main difference would be like smoking just degenerates you so much. You go through so much more of it and it's just you start wearing it immediately. And, you know, to, to my experience, that snorting it or parachuting it, as they would call it, to swallow something like is more of a slow burn. But you're are you high still speed. kind of burning up a lot of life force? Yeah, I mean, I, I always reckon I knew that you're stealing the years at the end of your life to to pressure them, like right. create a diamond in the pressure. That right. was the hope. Yeah. You know, but the, but also those are kind of the, those are the rationales you tell yourself a bit. And I also realized I was really covering up a lot of my own blocks. You know, I really was sincerely um, trying to put a callus wherever it hurt. Okay, well, that's what I want to, that's why you're here. You have an album out. That doesn't matter. Stone, though. That, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have an album out. Go and, and whatever. You, Fucking, people can do stuff. Let the algorithm do what it's going to do. <laughs> uh, let the algorithm speak. <laughs> Somebody said the fucking funniest thing to me recently. I met a guy on an elevator in New York and he goes, he goes, yeah, you come on my algorithm sometimes. What's your name? <laughs> and it was like, that's what it is. That's not but like it was I just saw him you saying you on, came all over my algorithm. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, but just that's where this, what it is now. It's like, yeah, you got in my algorithm. Right. But why are all the words for it so disgusting? It's like, you got to check my feed where you're like, man, <laughs> no, I don't, you put it like that. I don't want to check the bag from around your ears. What? Okay. So you, you said that you didn't do any self-help stuff till about five years ago. So it seems like you were just living in a haphazard way. Well, and, it was uh, frankly, I was like, it's working for me. I'm able to get myself. Right. I'm able to get myself off for long stretches of time. How long? Uh, it would be like four months. You yeah, know, five months. And, and and was was it, and it difficult? Was all or it was it like, was, well, it was. Of course, it's increasingly difficult. It, and so it would be on purpose. It would say, in order to justify my next camping trip, so to speak. He called it camping. <laughs> in order to justify this, I need to, you know. Also, it's like I would be home. And I would be a father and I wouldn't be on tour. And so I would be like, this is not, I need to show myself I have this control. And so I was kind of always flexing on my own psyche that way. And there, I, I, I want to pause and say, I get a perverse pleasure from deprivation. Yeah. I, I did like, and I, it sounds like you did too. Like that yeah. sort of like, like there's something biblical about like in the des in the des, like, you know yeah and i i guess i romanticize my own ideals anyways and so romanticizing like i can take it i can do this 
and this is the right thing to do in this moment. And then I can choose to stay off if I want to. It's like somehow running myself through the paces of you got to earn this. Mm -hmm. I never felt like I would be playing music this long anyways. And so it comes to be that, you know, it's also like you got to earn this too. And this is art and you got to, you know, you have to Art, take it like, on the chin, you know. Yeah, it's, everything's a trial by fire. Well, and I've, I've always, I've always loved my own blood and spit and scars and things like that. And so, not only the, uh, it's also the degradation of it too. Right. Like this mutual degradation amongst what's a little blood amongst friends. This is how we do something amazing. To do something classic, you have to do something classic. And what's fucked up i still believe that you know i still uh, well, what's believe funny that. is that reads in your work and it also reads in the fans it feels like a lot of people believe it and they're it like your sort of genre has so many visual trappings tattoos there's like a low rider thing yeah vampires somehow <laughs> long beach there's like this pile from the outside in i'm like oh that's they're all into it yeah. You know, it's doing that thing that, that is very jumbo shrimp. It's like trying to get an, a group of individuals. It's trying to take from a bunch of little cliques and unite them all and, and admit, I don't want all of you. I just want some of you. What's funny is even though I've sort of omitted or, or not omitted, but sort of extracted speed from the my conversation or my lifestyle anymore, the ideals remain the same. Those things are unchanged. It's just more dealing with them head on mm -hmm. and being... And not allowing Crystal to be part of that truth. Right. Like, my solution starts here. Hit it, Gary. Bring those lines over. It's just yeah. not... It, because I, I, I realized that how much I was running from things instead of... I felt like I was taking them head on. And I, and I was colliding well, yeah, with yeah, because things, it is... You know? There is something brutal about it. Yeah, it's it's brutal. It's a brutal lifestyle. You know? But it's... There's, like, a cool... There's, like, a cool... It's, you know, it's like the glamour of you know bukowski and and yeah and the, and the salt and sea yeah and and like the fringe of life its entry point is the fringe of life and so joshua tree and and to to feel like you're escaping you look no further than where you're already standing you know you're in this location and, and the mental location of the fringe from the start and so it becomes really simple to make art or really not simple joyous to make art there because you feel like you're living the art you're, you're making. You're already outside. Yeah. You're an outside. Like yeah, and, everyone and there the is The tough part outsider. is the romantic side of that. Because yeah. again, as I said, I was like, I, my ideals like fairness and justice and and love and revenge and the, the perfection and, and you know, you know, forgiveness. That I romanticize those because that's what that's what we kind of do. Is you know, you're, you know, I I need to believe that it's real so it doesn't feel silly. You yeah. Know? But also, when you do stuff like speed, you really deny what hurts. You know, you really, and you're doing a psychotic, you know, and, and so. It is a psychotic. I mean, it, it is a psychotic. And so you're, what you're doing is encouraging. What I really learned in the last five years is that anger is the sword I hold in a hand which is hurt, right? So when I would feel insecure or scared, afraid to do something um, or challenged by that, Sometimes my reaction is anger, you know, which really doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, it's a fight or flight mechanism, I guess, right. but it, it doesn't make sense in the solution. Like, I'm scared, so the first thing I'm going to do is get really pissed off. Yeah. Chance to be well, the very first putting yeah. gambit. Smoking crystal seems like a badass, hardcore thing Snort. to do. Snort it. I'm sorry. Snort it. Again. Again. I'm Guys, <laughs> don't smoke it. Snort it. <laughs> Uh, if you take nothing away, if you stop it right now, <laughs> snort it. Um, I beg of you, sir. <laughs> sir. Uh, hear my words. Here, listen to me. You listen to me. Uh, it seems like a badass thing to do. It seems brave. It seems, but it's a complete avoidance. Yeah. I mean, it's the ultimate way to sort of be over sexualized and, and, and heightened at all levels, except for your emotional dexterity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like talk about being emotionally unlimber, and 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 also getting off the the depression associated with getting off and taking those breaks. So you're you're constantly heave hoeing on your. How long would the depression last when you quit? 
the full four months or would it be a couple weeks yeah i mean yeah. a couple weeks heavily you know and, and and you're really taffing out your depression so it's wide and you know it's uh and it hurts it hurts and it's uh, it's you know as you know like when you can't seem to get around it or away from it when it feels like it's all over you yeah and um like when it's in the eggs you're making yeah <laughs> you're like fucking gooey eggs. it's fucking under your nail you're just like fucking yeah get this shit off me. yeah there's it's it, when you find the the joylessness in like fucking eggs you know you're just <laughs> <laughs> fucking eggs again yeah you motherfuckers but it's 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 a hundred percent real so there's no way you know and then plus when you drain the ocean of that and that chemical depression side goes away you're still left with what was there from the beginning what made you start to actually do the work what made you start to actually think about your real problems not your relationship with crystal snorted Snorted. 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 well i i I always was hoping that there i knew there would be something someday that would be like that's the wall and i hope that that thing would be something where someone would say if you now's the time or you could die but it didn't involve dying (laughs) you know yeah you wish for that perfect wall right a soft a soft bottom yeah soft rock bottom right right? and also you know i there's guys like iggy who you know was a a pariah at times and a junkie notorious wild man who who has managed when i when i worked with him i talked to him extensively like how did you get to the spot where you have he has one bottle of wine with dinner at night and that's it and how do you how do you manage this how do you because I always felt I have the ability to exhibit those kinds of controls, but I'm not a control freak. I just, my preference would be to not have it go out of control. And so I'd rather just try to do that. You know, I don't, I'm not like, it must be is this way or nothing, you know? So I think I just, my family, you know, I, I was mostly spending my time on tour. That was my way of coping on tour. Doing and drugs. I, yeah. And then I would come home and, and it also, it created, it exacerbated that feral nature, nature in me, which I was like, makes the shows more unpredictable. And it does. <laughs> and I never knew what I was going to do. Nobody yeah. else knew. And it could be blood and it could be flowers. And it just did. And I loved rolling the dice like that, the, the risk. And then it just became like unmanageable. Yeah. Well, then it just was like, man hurts it just hurts my body hurt my my mind hurt and um the push and pull of going on and off that that felt like a job type job and right that's, and and I, I and and it was like how many times will i put myself through this and the reason is what, what's the fucking reason there's no reason you know and well and, you've done it before there's your reason yeah sure well and it was like and and I'm actually gaining enough knowledge to do it better now. Yeah, you know, I've thought about it. I'm an expert here. Yeah. But I just like I remember like, you know, going to the Coke dealers and just getting a gram, you know, when it was still light out. How I was much like is that? Early, it was like a hundred bucks. It was right, like but the, how much? How much? It's a gram of Coke. I don't know. Is. I've like, never. Uh, I've only seen it. Not, it six doesn't times. seem like a lot. It looks. It's maybe like sort like of like in the little rubber like a band. Tablespoon. Okay. No, it's like a like a like a like a what do you call it a, a heavy tablespoon ish. Okay. You know. Yeah. Not a ton. That might even be more than it. You know. Yeah. I wish they did it a tablespoon. They should. And a teaspoon. You can. Huh? It'd be easier. Yeah. Maybe it's sort of like, you know, it's like four or it's maybe like two or three sugar packets. Okay. You know, but I just remember getting it and then going to the bar at the Avenue B and 7th and just getting a pint of bass after doing a few rails at his house and just being like, this is the best. (laughs) It wasn't even like, where are we going? There was just possibility. There was like my brain. It had a sort of a riddling effect. I was jacked, but I was like, you know, like everything's okay. You know? Yeah. But then it just gets bad. You can't hold on to that. And, you know, and you don't really know how you're acting. You don't really know, you, you know, how you're coming you off. You probably don't care either, right? I think I, I, I kind of don't care, care how you're acting. I just yeah. thought I was like exciting. And, and it was like, it gave me, like, to what, just reacting to what you said earlier, like, I don't know that I am fundamentally angry. I don't think that's the deepest layer of me. I think I'm oversensitive and, you know, weirdly 
terrified of, of failure in all ways, including socially. Uh, and I think the anger thing happened after my first heartbreak and, you know, and I just kind of learned how to wear that. But I think ultimately I'm a hypersensitive person that has, a, I'm terrified of, uh, of being embarrassed and, 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 but it happens a lot. I think that was another thing I got from my mother. She was embarrassing my mother, the way she'd order at restaurants, the way she'd, you know, sexualize everything. So, so I don't, I, I think the anger came from, from, it was after, but, but I think the Coke gave me what I felt was some sort of genuine confidence. And I, and I think that what was annoying about me, even with you and those comments was that was some sort of insecure swagger. Well, yeah. that's what I always, the thing I noticed about you is like, dude, you're fucking really astute. Yeah. Just stop turning it on people that like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just hey, man, turn it's preemptive, on. man. I'm just, no, just I know, get... but it's like, what? I don't, I'm fucking I, hands up. I like, know, I, know, I like I know, you. I know. Well, that was, I guess, uh, in, in, when you have uh, bad boundaries, you know, the way you establish them is not, uh, is not great. Right. It's you shank, you got to shank. It's yeah, prison yeah, yeah, logic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, psych psychological, uh, Prison logic. Yeah. So it came from fear. I just feel like I just didn't have a sense of self for, you know, in, until fairly recently. And so what's funny ago. is it's like you, but you haven't really changed that much. I know. I know. Like, it's weird. You know, when I, at some point, like a decade ago or so, I was watching my old stuff thinking like, I can't watch it. And I'm like, oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what am I thinking? What's going on up here to where like, I don't even know who that guy is. Yeah. I'm like, I know that guy. Yeah. The same guy. I'm still embarrassed, but it's like, and yeah, it's true. I was less embarrassed though. It was helpful. Yes, it's not as embarrassing as you think. It's totally be. not. I'm like, I was just trying jokes. They weren't bad. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.